Today on North O2, we are finally going to be talking about the Tyrant Lizard King, or more commonly known as T-Rex. This animal was one of the largest carnivores of all time and had the strongest bite of any land animal ever. Before we talk about the truly awesome power this animal possessed, we will look at the species' origins. Tyrannosaurus rex was a tyrannosaur. The family Tyrannosauridae is a basal family that includes all tyrannosaur lineages. It first appeared 65 million years ago in the late Jurassic. The first tyrannosaurs were small, dromaeosaur-like animals with relatively large arms compared to the later descendants. A good example of an early tyrannosaurid would be DeLong. DeLong was a relatively small dino at only 5 feet in length and only a few feet tall. DeLong had the basic shape of all future tyrannosaurs, and it is thought to be almost completely covered in feathers. Like modern birds, it was only lacking feathers on its feet, face, and hands, but otherwise it would have looked like a big flightless bird without a beak. This is important that this dino had feathers because it is an ancestor to the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. Yes, that means the feathers are ancestral to T-Rex. I will talk about this more later in the video. Anyways, this group of dinosaurs stayed small in the Jurassic period and the early Cretaceous, but would become larger over time. Daspitosaurus was a little more down the line of Tyrannosaurids. It looked a lot more like T-Rex and existed only a few million years before T-Rex. It is hard to say if this animal had feathers because it seems there's not a lot out about this particular dinosaur that is relevant right now. In the late Cretaceous, Tyrannosaurus family finally reached the monster size that we all know and love. The largest of which, of course, is the infamous Tyrannosaurus rex. This beast first appeared 68 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. It was of course the apex predator of its environment. Nothing could even come close to matching the strength and power of this beast. The largest individuals could be over 40 feet long and 12 feet tall at the hips. That means that this animal was taller than a modern day African elephant. That just blows my mind to think of how big an elephant is and then just to see it dwarfed by a predator. The largest of the T-Rexes could weigh 30,000 pounds, that is heavier than the weight of two African elephants. So we got that covered that this beast was giant. It is not only one of the biggest predatory dinosaurs, but I would argue that it is far better than any other predator of its size. This is mainly because of its head. So first of all, its vision was amazing. Don't be fooled by the dumb movies, this dino had some of the best vision of all time. In a study done on the eyes of this animal, it was found that it had an incredible binocular vision. Binocular vision is when the vision of an animal overlaps. This provides a more accurate picture and also provides the ability to see depth. Its binocular range was 55 degrees, which is even wider than Hawks. Just look at a photo of T-Rex looking at you. Even with its huge snout, it can probably see you with both eyes while looking at you from even an angle. Human's vision is pretty bad and everyone kind of knows this. An eagle has vision about 3.6 times better than us but the fearsome T-Rex had vision 13 times better than us. We can see something relatively clear from 1.6 kilometers away, but T-Rex could see something clear from 6 kilometers away. So you can understand that this animal's vision allowed it to be one deadly predator. So now let's talk about its sense of smell. T-Rex had the best sense of smell of its time. Nothing even came close. Other theropods compared to modern birds, and most modern day birds have a very bad sense of smell. A good sense of smell and good eyesight would have let this animal track prey from miles away. So now let's talk about the amazing bite of this animal. Here's a chart comparing the bite force of different predatory dinosaurs. As you can see, T-Rex blows these guys out of the water. Its mouth had 60 giant serrated teeth. The largest tooth ever found from a T-Rex was 12 inches long. The front teeth would grip the prey as the side teeth would tear flesh, and finally the back teeth would force the food down the throat. I can't even imagine the force and deadliness of this creature's bite. This animal's senses were crazy. It could see and smell you from miles away, but could it catch up to you? It has been a debate for a while now how fast this animal could run. Long ago, we thought it could run about 40 miles per hour, but we now know this to be inaccurate. It is thought the T-Rex could only run 10 to 25 miles per hour. Well, at least that is a common number that has been thrown around. I believe that a full-grown one could run upwards of 20 miles per hour for sure. It is so big that every stride it makes is 10 to 15 feet. It may look like it is moving slow, but that is an optical illusion. Another unusual feature that this animal possesses are very small arms. People like to make fun of these arms for being small, but in reality, they are stronger than any human today. Evidence shows us that T-Rex's arms had very thick bones and large muscles supporting them. These relatively small arms could curl over 430 pounds. The heaviest a human can curl is about 300. 
A lot of people have speculated that these arms were vestigial. A vestigial organ is an organ that an animal does not have much use for, so over time it becomes very small. An example would be a human tailbone. Our ancestors used to have tails a long time ago, but we have no use for them, so they just shrunk. T. rex's arms were most likely not vestigial because we would have expected them to be much smaller and more useless than they really are. For example, Carnotaurus also possessed tiny arms. These arms had little to no use. They could not move their wrists and had no claws on their fingers. On the contrary, T. rex had relatively small but strong arms with two fully formed fingers. So what could they have been used for? There are three main ideas about these arms. Mating, pushing themselves off the ground, or grasping prey. Likely T-Rex had these arms for all three of these purposes. Maybe more will come out about this in the future to be more certain, but for now, we know that T-Rex's arms were powerful and had a use for something. So now let's talk about what T-Rex preyed on. A full-grown T-Rex would have had to eat 1,200 pounds of meat a day to sustain itself. That means that, of course, it had to eat a lot of dinosaurs. But was it even a predator to begin with? A large, slow-moving predator with such a great sense of smell has all the characteristics of a scavenger, but this theory has kind of been debunked. I'm not saying that T-Rex did not feed on any dead dinosaurs, but there is evidence to support that this was a predator. A vertebrae from a species of hadrosaur named Edmontosaurus was found with a T-Rex tooth lodged in it. This was definite evidence that a T-Rex was an active hunter. Bite marks have been found on a species of hadrosaur and triceratops that have shown to have healed after an attack. This further proves the theory that T-Rex actually hunted its prey. The animals that this beast preyed upon were giant. Edmontosaurus was one of its smaller prey items and was about 7,000 pounds. The infamous Triceratops would have been one of T-Rex's more challenging opponents. The largest individuals could weigh 26,000 pounds and have meter-long horns sticking out of their heads. There is even evidence that T-Rexes cannibalized each other. Here is a photo of a T-Rex bone that was chomped upon by another member of its species. This is not very surprising considering that carnivores tend to be cannibals. You have to remember that not all animals have the same awareness or care to prevent them from eating a carcass or killing members of the same species. So now let's talk about the hot debate. Did T-Rex have feathers? We have a very small amount of physical evidence of what T-Rex was actually covered in. We do know from fossil evidence that T-Rex had scales on its feet. So that's the answer, right? Wrong. Modern day birds have scaly feet, but they still have feathered bodies. We also have evidence of scales on the bottom of the tail of one rex. This small section is smaller than a coin and this region could have still had feathers in life. Scales and feathers are two separate things, but not by much. They are made of similar materials but differ in shape. It is possible that these small scales had a type of feather between them. This may sound confusing, but just look at the feet of owls. They are scaly but simultaneously covered in hair-like feathers. T-Rex would have not had feathers like the flight feathers of a goose but more feathers like downy feathers or just resembled hair. Also, many theropod dinosaurs that we have discovered to be covered in feathers lack them on the bottom of their tails or just on their tails entirely. Calindra dromius was covered in feathers but lacked them on their tail. So all we know about T-Rex's skin covering is that it had scales on its feet and tail. It also possibly had bare skin on its body where there is no feathers or scales. The direct evidence does not show much, but the fact that the Rex's ancestors had feathers lends credence to the idea that some of the parts of the body had feathers. That is all I'm going to say about the feathers on Rex. There is not much evidence, but it most likely possessed some feathers. Trey the Explainer did an excellent video covering this topic, so go check out his video on it. So now I want to try to bring some realism to the concept of T-Rex. When I was younger, the thought of a dinosaur was so distant and obscure that they were just as real as dragons to me. Now as I grow older, I can finally begin to understand that these beasts are just animals like the lion or bear of today. I'm just going to show some photos that I have deemed realistic of T-Rex and other components of realism. Of course, like most animals in the Cretaceous, T-Rex went extinct. This species stayed around until the bitter end and died out in the KT mass extinction. A 6 mile wide asteroid crashed into what is now Mexico 66 million years ago. 
This event killed about three-fourths of the species on Earth at the time, and it would start a whole new era in Earth's history. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something new about the infamous T-Rex. Support for the channel has really been growing, and I can't thank you guys enough, so I hope you guys like and subscribe. Check out my subreddit in the description below, and also comment any scientific inaccuracies I may have made in this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode of North O2. See ya.